page. <laughs> so that's what we're working with. Say hi to the camera. <laughs> I feel like I've read the story before. <laughs> Hi everyone, <laughs> it's me. Let's make a reading fort. Bye Sage. <laughs> Welcome to my <laughs> reading fort. Sweating. Okay, so the idea of this video is we are going to do a 24-hour reading challenge in my blanket fort. We are going to do the timer method. I have researched and looked online at how other like booktubers do this challenge. There are basically two methods that I've seen people do this. The first one is where people try and read for 24 hours straight or like as much as they can within a 24 hour span. And then the second way I've seen people do it is doing the timer method. So they try and read as much as they can. And then if they pause to like have meals or go to sleep, they pause the timer and then resume it again when they continue reading. So I'm going to do the timer method because I value my health and my sleep, but we're basically just gonna read for 24 hours. Hopefully all in this blanket fort. I don't know if it'll last like the night or anything. Yeah, let's get some books. <laughs> This is everything I have currently on my physical TBR. I'm most likely not actually gonna get through all of these, but I brought them down just in case. So first of all, I have The Vicious Duology by V.E. Schwab, A Conjuring of Light, also by V.E. Schwab. This is the third and final book of the Darker Shade of Magic series. Fragile Threads of Power, also by V.E. Schwab, but I can't start reading this until I finish this, so, you know. The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, the third book in the Cruel Prince trilogy. The Burning God, the third book of the Poppy War trilogy, by R.F. Kwong, Powerless by Lauren Roberts, which I have seen everywhere on social media, Crooked Kingdom, second book of the Six of Crows duology by Lee Bardugo, Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Menesco, Meniscala, Meniscalco. <laughs> I bought this book because I thought it looked cool, but after I bought it, I realized it might be a spinoff based on another book or series from her, and I have no idea about this world. Like, I, I don't know anything about it, so I don't know. Am I allowed to read this? Like, will I understand it? Who knows? <laughs> Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. Just got this in my pre-order yesterday. I'm so excited about this one. Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I've had this on my physical TBR for so long. You don't even want to know, you guys. You'd Be Home Now by Kathleen Glasgow. Also been on my TBR for so long. In the Unlikely Event by Rebecca Yaros. All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dore. The Quiet Tenant by Clemence Mikalo. Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. What the River Knows by Isabel Ibana. The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzon. And then on top of that, I just got a Kindle for Christmas and I have loaded it up, you guys. I loaded up all of the arcs that I have onto it and yesterday was also Stuff Your Kindle Day, so I've got a lot of books on this as well. So that's what we're working with. <laughs> so this is the vibe. <laughs> Do you like it, Sage Baby? Oh my gosh, I'm literally sweating. I need some water. <laughs> I am about to start the timer and start reading. I am currently in the middle of this book right now. It just says untitled on my Kindle because it's an arc. But I started reading The Fury by Alex Michalides last night. I think that's how you say his name. But if you don't recognize the name of the author, he's the one who wrote Silent Patient, which is a book I read in 2022, but it became so popular like earlier in 2023. He is a thriller author, like a psychological thriller author author, but this book revolves around a murder on a private Greek island. And so yeah, it's an arc. It does release January 16th though, I believe, so pretty soon. I think I'm about halfway through it. So my first book of the fort is going to be this, just continuing it. According to my Kindle, I have an hour and 35 minutes left of the book, so <laughs> let's begin. I finished The Fury by Alex Michalides. Took me an hour 13 to finish it, so it was a little faster than the Kindle was estimating. I thought this was pretty entertaining. Definitely lots of like twists and back and forths. The style of the writing was very similar to Silent Patient, where we have a very extremely 
unreliable narrator who also kind of breaks the fourth wall which is pretty interesting to read. This and Silent Patient which are the two books I've read from this author are both written in first person but instead of just like regular first person the narrator actually acknowledges you as the audience as if he's like sitting there at a bar telling you a story. I will say though I feel like after reading Silent Patient this book was a little predictable just because the author kind of followed the same twists, the same structure in the story and so the ending didn't blow my mind as much as The Silent Patient did but I still think this was a really fun book to read. Definitely a good psychological thriller. It made me laugh a couple times just because of like, <laughs> I don't know, the twists were making me laugh. I'm gonna give this four stars. So I'm gonna log that into my Goodreads and then we'll pick a second book to read. Also, I don't think you guys see this from that angle, but I have a cat on me. <laughs> Say hi to the camera. Oh. Okay, what book should I read next? I've been really excited to read Powerless by Lauren Roberts just because I've heard so many people talking about this. This is a romance fantasy or fantasy romance, I believe. What is this about? The elites have possessed powers for decades. Okay, there's elites that have magic. There's ordinaries who don't have magic. Hayden is an ordinary posing as a psychic to blend in with the elites. She unwittingly saves one of Ilya's princes. She's thrown into the purging trials, a brutal competition showcasing the elite's powers. I feel like I've read this story before. <laughs> this is a trope in fantasy and romanticy where we have our ordinary non-powerful people being thrown into like some sort of a trial or competition with magical people. Doesn't sound unique, but it's probably fun. Let's start reading Powerless. I'm gonna start my timer again. You are going on a side quest while I read Powerless because Huffy is making homemade granola today and he wants to show you. Have fun! It's my first time making granola. Just came out of the oven. I'm still gonna add, I'm gonna add these, these chocolate chips. I'm gonna add these and I'm gonna add these. Just kidding, or am I? I also got these for Jamie. She likes salty snacks. Oh yeah, I'm gonna add these as well. These are coconut. Shreds. I'll show you guys when it's finished. It smells good. I made a nice mess, but I'll clean that up. What do you think, Sage? Does it smell good? Okay, I've paused my timer. We're about two hours in. <laughs> 24 hours is a lot. I've read 36 pages of Powerless so far. It's all right so far. I'm not like so into it yet, but we're only like 30 pages in. So we shall see. So far, it seems very Hunger Games and Red Queen-ish, just in terms of the setting of our world, how we're like starting the story. But I just got a very exciting package and I want to open it with you guys. A couple weeks ago, I made an order with House of Jupiter, which if you have not heard of them, they're very well-known book merch company and I just wanted some cozy like book attire to wear while I read. The first one is my Terracin sweater. If you don't know what Terracin is, Throne of Glass read it. <laughs> and then the second one I got written by Emily Henry because we all love Emily Henry. Those are the two sweaters I got. I'm gonna put these away and then we'll continue reading. Huffy has finished his granola. That looks really good. Cheers. Mmm. I think it might be a bit too sweet. Really? I don't think so. It's even a little bit savory. It's all salty? Yeah, it's like a little salty. Hey guys, I'm just over 200 pages in, almost halfway through the book. I have my kitties sleeping, resting with me, and we are at the five hour mark. I think I'm gonna take a little break for food and stuff just because like my eyes are getting tired and I'm getting hungry so I want to make dinner. I'm a little underwhelmed by Powerless so far to be quite honest. It's basically the Hunger Games crossover with the Red Queen and so 
far I haven't seen anything unique about it like I know a lot of fantasy books follow this whole three trials kind of a deal we see a lot of like powerless so to speak main characters who are very human and vulnerable and get thrown into these situations and I know that's a thing in fantasy and I'm fine I, I love those kinds of stories but I feel like so far in powerless I just haven't seen anything unique to make it stand out compared to other books certain like story arcs or scenes are literally like exactly the same as the Red Queen and so yeah I'm just I'm waiting for something to happen that like differentiates this book from the others I guess but hopefully that happens it's a good story so far I'm not saying it's bad and like the writing's very engaging we get dual POV which is nice but yeah I just I need a bit more of an interesting story so hopefully we get there but yeah I'm gonna feed myself I had to turn my living room lights on because these fairy lights are cute, but they just do not offer enough brightness to read. It's 4.30 p.m. I just ate. That was kind of a weird, like, early time for dinner, I guess, but we're all fed. Let's continue our timer and continue reading. I can't believe we're only at five hours. I honestly kind of feel exhausted, <laughs> but it's a reading marathon, so we'll continue. It's still very cozy in here, and hopefully I'll read at least five more hours today. I want to get close to 10 hours before we call it a night. Page 216 in Powerless, we have Kai's point of view. Let's read. <laughs> you can take a chance and try once more. I've come across a point in this book where I, I think there's a mistake. <laughs> If you haven't read this book, please skip forward, but if you have, keep watching, or if you don't care, keep watching, but I'm about to show you a section of the book that's, um, I think a mistake. Okay, so our characters are, like, at the end of the first trial, I guess. We're kind of at this final battle scene, and so we have a couple of different fights happening between the contestants. We have Braxton, apparently going to charge at Blair. So apparently Braxton and Blair are fighting. Then an invisible person, probably Hera, goes after Jax and punches him. Andy, who's the shapeshifter, transforms and then goes after Hera. So Andy is fighting with Hera, Braxton is fighting with Blair. Our Kai sees Ace and then Kai's like, found my target, so Kai's gonna go after Ace. But then here, it says Payton and Andy are fighting off Braxton and Blair while Jax and Hera disappear and dance around each other, landing solid blows before vanishing. But isn't Braxton fighting Blair and Andy fighting Hera? I'm a little confused. <laughs> that doesn't really make sense to me, but you know what? I guess it's not a major plot point. It's just a very confusing battle scene, but I just found that weird. I don't know. My fort is drooping. It's fine. I apologize if my dishwasher is loud. It's just, it's right over there. Finished this book, 500 pages. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was kind of mentioning this to you as I was reading the book, but I just, I feel like because of the reaction I've seen to this book, I expected something like a lot better, like something outstanding. And instead I feel like I just got a decently okay romanticy. Like it was fun to read, it was fast paced, it was entertaining, but it was just nothing special. Because as I mentioned previously as well, I feel like this just took like half of the plot points from The Hunger Games, half of the plot points from Red Queen and just smushed them together. I don't know if this author has read Hunger Games or Red Queen, but if she has, she definitely got inspiration from those two stories. I feel like the whole premise of this book, a lot of the scenes seem to be, I never want to say rip off because like it is possible that two authors get the same idea and the same inspiration but it just felt like a lot of the same and it felt like something I had read before. That being said though there were definitely exciting moments in this book. Hearts that made me gasp parts that made me feel worried for the characters, but I feel like maybe some more thought could have been put into this world. I also feel like the world was not built very well. We didn't really get much world building here. I'm gonna rate it a 3.5 star. The way everyone was reacting to this, I was expecting another fourth wing, and it wasn't. I do though think the banter between our two main characters was really fun in this book, and it was a funny dynamic. I enjoyed reading about the two of them together, and we definitely got left on quite the 
cliffhanger so there's definitely some exciting story to look forward to in the second book if you're looking for a stereotypical romanticy book this will do it for you I guess I was just expecting something extraordinary anyways how long have I been reading holy heck this was a long book to read <laughs> in a 24 hour reading challenge currently at 8 hours 49 minutes I think I'm actually going to take a little break take a shower maybe get ready for bed and then start reading something else in bed tonight but I have to decide what I want to read I think I'm going to step away from fantasy because I literally just read one and I don't know if I can jump into another fantasy immediately I feel like this one might be good in the likely event by Rebecca Yaros this is a military romance about a girl named Izzy who gets on a plane where she is seated beside a charming handsome man <laughs> their plane goes down down. That's terrifying. I guess they continue on with their lives. He goes on to a military career, she goes into politics, and they, I don't know, just keep seeing each other. I don't know. We'll read, we'll read it and see how we go. But yeah, I'm gonna get ready for bed and just like dive into this one. Good morning. As I showed you, we got up to 9 hours, 49 minutes, so we almost made it to our 10 hour goal for the first day, which is pretty dang good. It is 8.49 a.m. now, and we are going to start reading again. I am still reading In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yarrow, page 50-ish, so we're kind of just getting into it, but so far I like it. We have the whole dual POV thing and the whole two timeline thing going on. I feel like Rebecca Yarrow is just like, she's really good at writing books books that are easy to read but also good like the way she writes it's not like it's not like a puzzle <laughs> that she's writing with her sentence structure it's just very conversational and I feel like she's really good at writing natural dialogue as well the fort's gone <laughs> You probably noticed. I put it away last night because it was just taking up our entire living room. It was very fun for the day, but we're just gonna continue our 24 hour reading challenge outside of the fort. Also, the cats would have just destroyed it overnight too, I feel like, so. It's time to go back to being an adult. Back to having an adult living room? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna read. <sighs> Rebecca, what do you do to me? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm officially an emotional wreck after reading this. Thank you, Rebecca Yaros, for literally making me cry in every single one of the freaking books you write. This woman, you guys, <laughs> I don't know what she does to me. I've read four of her books now, and I have not gotten through a single book of hers without tears. So yeah, anyways, in the likely event, so good. As I mentioned, it follows the relationship of two people who unfortunately meet on a plane that crashes. So they bond over this traumatizing experience, and they just keep getting hold towards one another throughout their lives. The male main character is in the military, the female main character is a politician, and yeah, Oh, like Rebecca just the way she writes relationships whether or not it's a romantic relationship or the friendships or the family relationships oh like just wrenches at my heart I know Rebecca Yaros has gotten super super popular for fourth wing and iron flame but don't skip over her romance books you guys like don't sleep on them because they are good I have read this one and the other one I've read is just over here this one's actually the first book I read from Rebecca the things we leave unfinished also made me sob <laughs> like a baby. She writes from the heart. I've mentioned this before. I know that Rebecca grew up in a military family. I know that her husband is retired from the military as well. So when she writes these military love stories, she knows the feeling of loving someone in the military and she uses that to her advantage and it hurts in the best way possible. But I'm gonna give that a five star. And I think I've given every Rebecca Yaros book I've read so far a five star. She's just that good. But that's that. Let's move on to select another book. I don't know what I wanna read next. 
It's either gonna be Ruthless Vows, because this just came up and Divine Rivals was so good. I wanna like finish up this duology, but Crooked Kingdom is also a book I've wanted to read to finish the Six of Crows duology. I've wanted to read Tress of the Emerald Sea just to get into Brandon Sanderson, but you know what? We're gonna read Ruthless Vows. <laughs> <laughs> Did I even show you what time I'm at now? <laughs> I've paused it for now, but I'm at 14 hours. So we have 10 hours left. Oh my gosh, you guys. I did not know that this 24-hour reading challenge would be so, like energy sucking. <laughs> I feel like I always joke around about like the fact that I just literally read all day. Like when I'm not working, when I'm not busy doing chores or whatever, I'm just reading in all my free time. But there's a difference between reading in all your free time and then just like straightforward reading for 24 hours. And I have to tell you guys, I'm tired. <laughs> my eyes feel strained, which like probably isn't good for my health, but you know what? <laughs> We've just got 10 hours left to go, so <laughs> we could do it. And yeah, reading challenge is definitely harder than it seems. Like, yes, I am having fun just reading nonstop, but I feel like the added pressure of just the challenge like looming overhead, I don't know, it's just, it's a lot more tiring doing it this way. We're gonna read Ruthless Vows. If you don't know what Divine Rivals is, it is a historical fantasy romance, more of a romance than a fantasy, I would say. Divine Rivals was the first book, and Ruthless Vows is the second book, completing the duology. In Divine Rivals, we have had a rivals to lovers sort of a romance story with the backdrop of a war between two gods. So our two main characters are love interests. We're both journalists and that's why they were rivals. They were like work rivals and they both ended up being like war journalists. They both got sent to the front lines of the war to document it, report on it, etc. If you love historical romance with like typewriters and love letters, you would love Divine Rivals. I really did enjoy Enjoy the first book, but I feel like I didn't like it as much as everyone else did because it wasn't marketed correctly to me. I feel like the way I was put on to Divine Rivals was by people saying, if you like Fourth Wing, you should read Divine Rivals. And I think that's completely false. They're two completely different books with different writing styles, different genres completely. So I feel like I went into Divine Rivals expecting something and got something else out of it. But that being said, the writing is beautiful. I think Rebecca Ross just has a way with language. I think what I was missing the most about Divine Rivals was that people were saying it was a fantasy and I would say it was barely a fantasy. Like there was some mention of gods and the war being about the gods, but we didn't really get too much magic or too much about the gods. I'm thinking we might get more of that in this second book. Just seeing like from the way Divine Rivals ended, but yeah, we're gonna get into this. Really excited and I'm still, my eyes are still like, uh, raw from crying, but let's give this one a go. I'm on page 106. Ugh, this book is so good. So I feel like because I was expecting Divine Rivals to be fourth wing. I feel like I didn't really take the time really to appreciate the letter writing, how beautiful everything was, just how like romantic and delicate the entire story was. And I feel like now knowing what to expect in this book, Ruthless Vows, I am just appreciating it so much more. I'm loving the beauty of it. I feel like I'm getting everything that I wanted to get in this book. We are also seeing a lot more of the gods, so we are getting a bit more of the fantasy element of it. Although I would still classify this as more of a historical romance with a drop of fantasy, the letter writing is just so beautiful. There are also a lot of moments so far where things have come full circle. Things are tying up quite beautifully in this sequel and I still have quite a ways to go in this book so I know things are gonna get hectic and chaotic again but just so far I'm really liking the direction that this book is going in. So 15 hours, 55 minutes. We're almost at 16 hours which means we have eight more hours to go. <laughs> That's so much but yeah let's let's continue we take on. <laughs> i had to turn the lights on because it's getting dark 5 p.m 17 hours i was really hoping to finish this challenge today but looks like we're probably gonna have to do a couple hours tomorrow morning because i like to go to bed early and i don't want to be reading till midnight because that's too late for me but okay lights are on we're gonna resume our position on the couch and just continue okay Okay. Hi. 
nice age. <laughs> Guys, I'm at 19 hours, 44 minutes, but I just finished Ruthless Vows. It was so, so, so good. We did get a lot more fantasy element kind of like in the second half of this book. So we did get a lot more with like the gods and the powers and the lore and all that stuff. And yeah, I just, I feel like this was a really great conclusion to the duology. Like I don't know if I could have asked for more. This book really wrapped up everything super, super well. I got all the moments that I would want to get and I'm gonna give this a five star. So that is two five star books in a row, which is amazing. But yeah, if you have not checked out this duology yet, Divine Rival and Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. So dang good. <laughs> Back on the shelf she goes. I think for my final read in this video, and I'm definitely not gonna finish this because it's for sure gonna take me more than like a couple hours to read this entire book because she thick is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I have just been inspired from Ruthless Bows to finish another duology. This book is like 550 pages long though. So yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be finishing it in today's video, but I'm going to read just a bit of this tonight. Probably gonna get ready for bed soon and read this in bed, and then we'll see how far into it we get tomorrow. I think I'm gonna sign off for tonight because I'm just like exhausted <laughs> at this point. I'm just gonna get ready for bed, read a bit in bed. We'll see how we are in the morning. <laughs> Good morning! <laughs> we did it. I actually completed my 24 hours of reading last night. I was just reading in bed and I just toughed it out and just kept going. I stopped this timer last night. Close to midnight, I would say. And so yeah, there it is. That is the end of the 24 hours. I know I didn't film, but like, you know, I was in bed and everything and I didn't didn't want to film. We were reading Crooked Kingdom, got up to page 170 last night. I was for sure reading at a much slower pace as we neared the end of the challenge. I feel like just two days of straight reading was a lot. So yeah, I definitely started slowing down my reading pace, but I will say Crooked Kingdom is very, very good so far. So far, I'm loving it a lot more than Six of Crows. I feel like I'm more immediately invested into the story. I feel like when I was reading Six of Crows, I was just spending the entire first half of the book trying to like familiarize myself with the world, with the magic system, with all the different characters. I couldn't really get into the story until close to the end, where in Crooked Kingdom, I already know like all of our main characters. So it's just been a lot more fun to read. And so far, yeah, I am enjoying this very, very much. So that's very good. That concludes our 24 hours of reading. So in total, we read five books. The first book, we were just finishing up the second half and then Crooked Kingdom, we just got a little bit into. So let's say it was probably more like four books that I read. Okay, yeah, it's been fun reading with you guys for the past two days. I'm definitely gonna take a little bit of a break from reading. I, pr I probably still will read like tonight in bed, but I'm probably not gonna read as much. I wanna go outside and touch grass, but it looks like it's like another rainy day. It's been raining all week here. <laughs> But yeah, I'm gonna try and touch grass today. Hopefully the weather will let me. But it's been fun and it's been interesting seeing like how much I've been able to read in two days by just trying to non-stop read. It's not something I'd recommend doing regularly like for your health, but you know. It was a fun challenge and I enjoyed doing it and filming this video for you. <laughs> and we read some really good books. So I'm gonna leave you guys here. <laughs> so if you did like this video, please leave me a like and a comment. If you don't know what to comment down below, let me know out of the five books that I read in this challenge, which one you would be most interested in reading or if you've read any of them as well. If you like me, subscribe, do that bell thing, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.